Right, it all starts here in my sketchbook. Uh, that's where I start to do lay the ideas, try to look at how I'm going to arrange the frame, arrange the, the action and the characters. And when I read Adrian's script, it made me think that I would try and incorporate his idea of having cinema frames, cinema scope, widescreen frames uh, throughout the story. But because his story is about <coughs> the breaking down of reality and the, the crossover between reality and stories, and reality and cinema, uh, I decided that the characters and the action would sometimes break out of the frames and sometimes not be contained by the frame at all, even though it's ultimately contained within the, front, within the page. So you will notice that throughout the story, that things are leaking out or that they are breaking out and slipping off the edge of the frame. Uh, it all starts for me with a, a red pencil or a blue pencil. That's a throwback to my animation training where we draw everything in blue pencil first then it gets cleaned up with a darker pencil. So for me it's a mechanical pencil, never have to sharpen it, always sharp. Um, and the blue and the red when you, when you erase it, particularly the red, it leaves a, a little bit of staining on the page for you. And that's just enough for you to work with, you don't need a really really strong line in order for you to be able to, be able to clean it up. <coughs> And I mean, you feel, for me, I, I feel like I can work a little bit looser, a little bit freer with the red and the blue pencil. Um, I don't feel as restrained. Uh, and the, the fine detail only comes in when I've used the putty rubber across it to, to get it back to its, its, its finest, its lightest line. And then I can go to work with it on the dark cleanup. Uh, I suppose for me, the whole love of comics started years and years ago. When I was little, my older brother was really into comics. So I got into comics because of him, and then I started reading the comics that he read. And comics teach you a lot, a lot about composition and story and cinematography. So if you move into video you've, or, or film, I think you get a lot of your, you can get a lot of your training from comics because comic artists tend to frame beautifully and they get a real sense of action. And storyboards are effectively comic images and they have that sequential pace to them. So a good comic has the same sort of pace that a storyboard will also have. So you actually feel the action unfolding. Uh, I mean, I think for me, comics fed into my loves and influences in terms of like animation. When I trained as an animator, that was partly because I loved to draw, I loved comics, but I also loved film and moving image, and it seemed like the perfect combination of the two. But the root for me of all of that is pictures on paper. Everything starts out as a drawing. Um, even if I'm doing something experimental, it starts out as a drawing. So doing a comic, for me is kind of getting back to the purest form of, of drawn visual narrative. And the little boxes story allows me to really go a little bit wild because of the, the surrealism of the story. You can really play around. Uh, and that's why I like the idea of the characters breaking out of the screen, breaking, breaking out of the frame. Because that's what the, the, the frames here really represent. They represent uh, TV and cinema screens. Uh, in terms of my influences, I think I've never tried to copy anyone else's style, but I think my I think my own drawing style is very, very heavily influenced by my animation training, because you have to have a very clean line, a very pure line. So uh, it ends up my work ends up, I think, having a bit of a cartoony animation sort of quality to it which I'm really pleased with. I've never tried to undo that because I, I really liked it. Um, but the, funny enough, some of the guys I, I really liked when I was younger had a, a really dynamic style. They really, really played with their line. People like Mike McMahon and Carlos Esquera. Um, they really get, you know, they gave, the, the line itself had a life to it. The line itself had a, a character and a quality to it which then fed into the characters. Um, 
so I, I don't know if I, I can't really say I was influenced by the people that I admired but they were really inspiring you from a young age you, you aspired to be as good as the great comic artists um, and the, these guys are still producing amazing stuff today people like Mike McMahon who's worked with always really really dynamic and really really punky and now his style is really really graphic but it's still quintessentially McMahon. I do try and use real people in my character designs where possible. Um, they're sometimes influenced by people I know or sometimes people I see. If I see a really really interesting face, if I don't have my sketchbook to, to try and jot it down, I do try and memorize that, that profile or that hairstyle so I can incorporate it into something later on. Um, and members of my family have often featured in my stories or in my drawings because uh, I know their face as well, I know their characteristics and sometimes uh, a characteristic that they have is shared by the character so I appropriate it and put it onto the page. Uh, one of the characters in Little Boxes is based on my younger brother so he hasn't seen this yet. And, um, Looking forward to uh, sending him the link so he can have a look.